African Americans were living in this community at the very, very beginning. What exists now existed back then. And I'm watching Afro American people accomplish many different things and all the other surrounding communities. But well, Norwich is like a Salem, Massachusetts, it just stays in time. At that time, Norwich was a bitch. It was a bitch at that particular time. I think we have uh, as good enough name as anybody else in this town. We're not angels, but yet we're not uh, devils either. I mean, uh, there's dirt underneath everybody's rug uh, if you get to digging. Everybody that I knew that knew Mr. Rooley was always favorable about him. I mean, some of them maybe didn't appreciate his art, but they never had anything personal against him. It may be appropriate to see Ellis Rooley as an outsider, particularly given the fact that he lived in such an unnurturing environment in Connecticut. He was taking part every year at the outdoor art show, and you could see that by his commitment that he was deserving of really having his work brought to the attention of the general public. I find him an artist, an artist's artist. I'm hoping we get to a stage where we can vaporize all the adjectives, uh, naive folk, outsider. He's not an outsider, he's an insider. I consider Ellis really a old master because he was able, because when I look at his work, I'm able to see what I think he wanted me to say. I don't have to analyze it, I don't have to intellectualize it, I understand it, you know, on a very, very simple level. But everybody else will intellectualize it and make it a drone on and on and on and on about it. It's very simple if you know what he's talking about. My uncle Ellis bought his property so that he would have his own little Garden of Eden. And I think that's basically what he was looking for. He wasn't concerned with who lived around him. I think he was happy to the fact that no one lived around him. He had a few neighbors lived up on the back of the hill. I guess didn't care too much about him buying that piece of land up there. You know, you had good memories. When nobody bothered you here, it was beautiful. It was like living in paradise. You had everything. But the people around here, they didn't like it because Wilhelmina was white. Ellis really Afro-American. And in some sections of the country, that wouldn't be very kosher, as they say, but uh, nobody thought anything about it here. We were just neighbors, that's all. And they used to say, Stop wasting your time with those little black niggers. The body appeared to be frozen pretty hard. Uh, there was no pulse and uh, just a cold body. Sure, he's the guy that found the body. Uh, I don't know if he called it in or what. It became a surprise to him, he told me, to drive down the road and see this gentleman lying in the middle of the road, dead. I think there were an awful lot of questions that should have been asked back then that were not asked. I think there was more to this individual's death than what has been recorded. I think it's extremely sad that here's a man, terrific artist, a man who obviously loved Mohegan Park, and years later, they're burning a cross or having a KKK rally. I think that's unexcusable, it's terrible. Anything like that is an embarrassment. It's, it shouldn't happen. So if you're going to investigate a murder, if you investigate anybody's death, you want to know how the hell it happened. So who knows what happened years ago up on that hill. I don't consider any of us outside of artists. I mean, he's just, he's a man that made art and he's a great artist. He should go down to history as a master and that's the way he should be viewed.